On today's show, the McLaren F1 gets a successor, a BMW shop builds a brand new clown shoe, and the raddest Camaro ever goes up for sale. Plus, we take a look at some of our readers' best air-cooled cars. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. First up, the McLaren F1 is probably the most legendary supercar of all time. Honestly, when it first came out, it was the fastest car in the world by almost every measure. And now Gordon Murray, the man behind the F1, is ready to reveal its successor. He's calling it the T50, and in an interview with our own Mike Duff, Murray said, and I quote, the T50 will be almost as big a leap forward from the F1 as the F1 was from the cars that have gone before it. Whoa, that is amazing. How will he do it? Well, material technology has advanced a lot in 30 years since the F1 was developed. Lightweight carbon fiber is everywhere now. It's used in race cars, wheels, and acai bowls, probably. Well, according to Murray, the T50 will weigh a little over 2,100 pounds. The engine is a 650 horsepower 4 liter V12 that's 30% smaller than the engine in the McLaren F1. But the T50's big trick is the active aero system. The T50 uses a network of flaps, wings, and even an electric fan to change how much downforce the car has, which is why it's being tested in a Formula One wind tunnel. The T50's launch was delayed by COVID-19, but Murray promises a virtual launch will happen in August, and I'm pretty excited to see something come out brand new this summer. And today in Why Didn't I Think of That? Everyone loves a BMW M3, right? It's the enthusiast all-rounder, which is pretty rare for BMW these days. But maybe that honor should go to the Z3M Coupe, or clown shoe as the nerds like to call it. Why? Because look at it, it looks like a clown shoe. A very, very sexy clown shoe. Just look at those lines, mmm, beautiful. And after all, the only thing better than a sedan that you can get sideways is a hatchback that you can get sideways. I mean, how else are you supposed to bring your dog drifting with you? I have a cat, she loves to go drifting, and she will be in this with me. From 1997 to 2002, and then from 2006 to 2008, BMW produced two generations of this sporty backpack. People love the quirky looks and the rigid chassis. Take the M3 engine and put it in a shorter wheelbase, Mwah! That's the kind of agile excitement I like. Today, you can buy the M140i, but it's not a true M car, and it's only available in Europe. Unless you build your own, of course, and that's what I think I want to do, because that's what some determined folks in the BMW and Mini Facebook group did. According to Road & Track, they took an M140i, welded on some body parts from the BMW M2, and voila, a modern M coupe. It looks like another group named Rampage Racing is doing the same. So the moral of the story is, if you want to build your dream car, just build it for yourself and you'll be completely happy. And finally, let's take a moment to reflect on the fourth generation Camaro. They can be fast, they can be loud, and sometimes they can even be both. But their smooth shape can get lost in a crowd. The solution? We figured it out. Graphics. It worked for Trans Am, so hopefully it's going to work for Camaro as well. This is a 1993 Camaro Z28 Pace Car Edition, built to commemorate the 77th running of the Indy 500. Take a look at this thing. It's rad as hell. It's basically a trapper keeper that you can drive, and honestly, I think Lisa Frank might have been jealous of this in the 1990s. The top half of the car is black and the bottom is white. Even the wheels are white. The rear corner panel looks like it got sideswiped by a giant box of crayons. Just look at all of those colors. And looking at the seats, it honestly, it looks like it should have been the backdrop to my elementary school photo. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Only a few hundred of these V8 powered skipping stones were made. So. If you want to grab the perfect machine for a Radwood burnout contest and do some sitters, this one is for sale on Bring a Trailer. Now coming up after the break, what do the Chevy Corvair, Volkswagen Beetle, and Porsche 911 all have in common? But first. Chevrolet Beretta. The heartbeat of America. Beretta. 
Last week, we asked our Haggerty community members to post photos of their air-cooled cars, and trust us, they did not disappoint. User CCA Dave has a 1971 Super Beetle. That's a replica of the 1971 1302S factory rally car. He's modernized it by installing a 2.1 liter fuel-injected Porsche motor and custom coilovers. Dave, he built this all by himself within eight months and has put over 140 thousand miles on it since. Nice job to you, Dave. Next, we have a user, MJ Posner and their 1965 Chevy Corvair Corsa. This convertible has a classic 60s interior that's just perfect for these summer days. All I need to do is drive to a, a sock hop, get a milkshake, and this is the perfect car for that. You would assume that Colin 356 has a Porsche 356, but the car he submitted is not that. It's actually a 1963 VW double cab. Trust us, there is no cooler shop truck than this, and I just love it. Now, PDR Patrick, he posted his wife's VW thing. This, she's only had it for a few months, but she says it is the funnest vehicle they've ever owned. And trust me, that right there is a high praise. But. Finally, and not lastly, he is my favorite. It's the user Paradell. Paradell, you've got a great name. He has been using and enjoying his 1985 Porsche Carrera Cabriolet for 20 years, and he has no plans of stopping now. If you'd like to see your car here in the future, go to community.haggerty.com and sign up. I'll be back tomorrow with all the car news you can shake a hearse shifter at. Until then, let's keep driving.